All right, get my notes up there. You see, this is how I take my notes. I basically just put this passage up and uh, hope that it hit me the way that I thought it did. <laughs> but anyways, hey guys, it's uh, good to be with you. It's um, 6 o'clock, at least over in Milwaukee. I know it's 6 o'clock. But, uh, hey, man, let's jump into some prayer, and I have some good news, I think, anyways. Father, I just want to thank you so much for uh, the way that you love us, God, the way that you give to us, Father, the way that you can refresh and reignite us, and, Father, the way that, uh, God, we learn how to fan the flame. Uh, we learn how to fan the spirit back into flame, and, and uh, just to make sure that we're motivated in the right ways, and, Father, being able to enjoy your favor, God, and... Um, got to be able to recognize your blessings when they come, Father, when they're here, and look at our life, Father, and, oh, God, just recognize the beauty and the majesty of design, and, uh, Father, even when things are not going well, Father, we can still look to the heavens, and, Father, just imagine, just think, I mean, I, I think that's lost sometimes, Lord, Father, just looking up in the skies, Father, it's impossible not to marvel at what you've done. And all of this was done with the power of your voice, God. I, I pray that you help us, God, to tap into that wonder, God, tap into that power today. God, to experience, Father, your, your blessings and your refreshing, Father. I pray that you would watch over those that are watching, those that are not watching, Father. I pray that you uh, continue to bless and uh, protect those, Father, in the harm's way of this uh, deadly virus, Father. I pray that... Uh, God, you provide us not just only with uh, your protection, but, Father, with your peace, God, with your comfort, and, Father, with an understanding, with our feet squarely fitted in the, the boots of the gospel, Father, the uh, <clears throat> get our footwork correct. God, I thank you so much for the lessons that I've heard today, God, the way that they enriched me, God, the way that they blessed me, Father, the way that they built me back up. And at the same time, Father, just I'm I'm just so inspired, Father, that no one has to take away or add anything to your word to make it so beautiful, to make it so perfect. Even in times of discipline, Father, it's so perfect because we know that a harvest of righteousness is right around the corner. Father, we thank you for this time, and lift this up in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, I wanted to uh, go into uh, part two of the God of all comfort. I wanted to study that a little bit further. Um, I will say this. If you haven't had a chance, you've got to check this out. I... <laughs> I think something Irene said was funny today um, is that we don't, <laughs> no one's doing this for like the numbers or what, it, we don't even know what that would mean. Like, <laughs> am I going to call Pastor Briggs and say, hey bro, I got seven likes today, let's see what you can do. No, we're not, that's, that <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's laughable to me because, uh, <laughs> I mean, what, what benefit do we get from that? Uh, but we do do it for a reason. <clears throat> okay, we do find our purpose, and it gives you drive. It gives you when you have direction in your life, it's much easier to move forward. I used to tell this to people all the time. Of course, I heard this. Some I don't know who. I wish I could give some credit to someone. But uh, when we're studying the scriptures with people, I often will ask them, um, "What's the most important thing to find when you're looking on a map, and you're looking, you know, you're trying to find your way to something?" Because we all we're all here. And we know the ultimate goal is, is to get to heaven, right? That, that kind of makes sense. It's like, all right, well, go ahead, get there. And well, if you don't, it was like, well, I guess that's up. I don't, you know, what you wouldn't, you wouldn't really know what you were saying, what you were talking about. No, the most important thing to do is exactly the reason why they take those big directories. Any of you that have been to a, a very large mall, you know, in San Diego, we got, there's one on every block. But if you go to these very large malls, you see the directory and it says, hey, Foot Locker's over here, uh, kids' Foot Locker's over here, women's Foot Locker's over here, the Macy's is this way, this is the way to Mervyn's. Uh, but the most important icon that you can find is the little figure that shows you. Uh, it's supposed to represent you, and it says, you are here. So, the reason that's so important is because if you're looking at this map and you don't know where you are, then really any direction you get after that is just going to be an act of frustration. Say, so, uh, Macy's is that way. It's like, well, is it? I'm going to start walking that way, but if you don't know where you're at, you could be walking in a very different opposite direction. And that is, of course, very frustrating. Um, that's... Who's back there? I think my kids were trying to find something, and that's all good. Again, we're, we're doing this from our homes. <laughs> 
But I want to continue here in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'll, I'll read the uh, key text here again. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, amen, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. So he is the God of all comfort. Okay. Now, having said that, I have to, we would have to bring this up. I, we mentioned it yesterday a little bit, and I thought Pastor Briggs did a brilliant job of this uh, this morning. In fact, I can't even give credit to Pastor Briggs. I think that was above his pay grade, so to speak. That was uh, really, really deep, deep things that he was talking about this morning. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and credit the Spirit. I think he'll be all right with that. It was, it meant something to me. It, uh, if you get a chance. It is worth the time. And for me, like, I'll put it in my headset because I'm not, I don't wake up at 5 a.m. right now. <laughs> uh, even with the boys, I don't wake up that early. But I'll put it, you know, on my headset. I download it and I listen to it and I can, you know, I'll walk through my, sometimes I'll be working out and uh, listen to a, a lesson or something. I try and incorporate it into my day as I can. And it's always worth it. It's always beneficial. And uh, today was most certainly no different. I really, really, and today was just a day. I uh, heard all. I listened to Michael Bidelman's uh, new testimony, where he gets uh, very honest, very real, very open, and lets us understand that um, God is still the God of what we call the backslider. Um, with another great word for that is uh, just a sinner, fallen saint. Man, sometimes we fall, and that's why we need two or three there together. So, hey, if someone falls, we got another one there to help pick us up, and that's what we're doing. This is we can call this the ecclesiastic ministry. We're here to help. Bring people up, because this is an important time for all of us to get, not just unified, uh, and, but also solidify our convictions, understand what we believe in, and grow in that direction, grow in these things. Um, and we've been able to, we have sidestepped um, different hurdles that have been in the way where things, oh, this is the one, this is the one that's going to trip these guys up in their little quest for, for unity and stuff. And we've, we've blasted right through them. I've seen God move mountains out of the way stumbling blocks removed and so i hope that this will help along with that too so yesterday we did talk about uh you know the god of all comfort and uh how he is there for the sinner um those of us that aren't as strong in the faith right now we want to be uh but this is a challenging time and i know you know bonnie and i we we were open with each other today i love communicating with bonnie um not just because it it helps with a healthy marriage amen <laughs> hopefully i'm not saying anything new but also, I just noticed that Bonnie and I always discover things. We, as we talk, we share, we get things off our chest. She's a professional counselor, so sometimes I lay back on the couch and complain about, you know. <laughs> no. uh, but we talk, and we get things off our chest. And even the good, sometimes it's not the prettiest. It's not all glories and hallelujahs. I wish it was. Sometimes it can get, you know, to the point where it's like, hey, I did not like this. This did not work out well for me. And uh, we'll talk about that, and I'm telling you, it brings us, it only brings us closer. And uh, not only that, but I just notice a time of refreshing that always seems to be ushered in through these times of just honest, open communicating before God, before man. Okay, so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Just being honest with ourselves and uh, allowing ourselves to be God's children, but also understand that you are a child, and we're going to make some mistakes, and that's all right. That's what grace, grace is beautiful. That's why we are to love mercy. Uh, start in Deuteronomy. It says, hey, what does the Lord require of you? And you'll see it. I want you to act in righteousness or act justly. Love mercy. Walk humbly with God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you see that in Micah 6, 8. But then you also see it in the New Testament as well. So these, th these key principles, after all the law was put out, all the training, all the miracles they saw, all the, everything, it boils down. It's like, well, what is God required of you? And see, sometimes I think that will get lost in the mix. Because you said, what does God require of you? And we want to add a whole bunch of other things. But that's not our place. Truly, I think as a heart matures in Christ, their desires and passions begin to change. Um, I'll give you this example from my own life. Is that, uh, you know, I have been a vegan now for, uh, my wife knows the real number, but I know it's over six years. She can give you the real statistics on that. Um, but it, that wasn't an easy conversion. I mean, I was a vegetarian before that, and then before that, whew, 
I was eating meat eight days a week. I don't even know how I pulled it off. It was, uh, it wasn't the best for my health. But, you know, I, that wasn't easy. But my appetites do change. I know if I say it to anybody else, of course they're going to think I'm crazy. And rightly so. I'm with you. Uh, I remember when I, <laughs> being approached with this, trying to make these changes. I said, no, <laughs> I can't. What am I going to do? What is my life going to look like without bacon? Come on, now, someone, someone's going to be with me on this. <laughs> I haven't had bacon in seven years, but I remember what it tastes like. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the same thing is true. My appetites began to change. Your appetites in Christ can be to change, but you have got to change your diet. You've got to change. Something has got to give. The Bible calls it repentance. Uh, sometimes it can just be called making a change. Okay, We can look at it this way if you'd like to. Uh, but I want to say this is that this idea that I'm presenting because of an email I received of this being a page of super Christians... Um, I would agree with that just because I love my friends, and I think they are super Christians, but I just think they're super individual. I don't, there's no such thing as a, a super Christian or anything like that. So, one thing I will say is that we can't. there's nothing we can do to soften God's lessons or anything like that. The, the Bible is the Word of God, not the Word of Alex, not the Word of anybody else. It's the Word of God, and it can't be changed. It, can't, it should never even be manipulated. None of these things are true. But what is true is that you can look to it as the Bible says, as a source of encouragement. The scriptures are there to encourage you, put strength back in your bones, put love back in your heart, put a fire back in the spirit. And it, this works contrary to the human condition, okay? Because the human condition is filled with doubts. Do you remember how the Great Commission starts? I, mean, I, lo I know we all know, you know Matthew 28, 18 through 20. But do you know 16 through 18? Because <laughs> it starts off with, but some doubted. <laughs> and those some that doubted, they saw incredible things. So it's not as if doubt is a new thing. Let me explain this to you. John the Baptist doubted. Okay? Luke 7, 20 through 22, it says, When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to ask you, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and he gave sight to those who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, uh, those who have leprosy are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. So John the Baptist, who comes in the spirit of Elijah, the prophet, he has concerns, he has doubts. That in no way did that shake his place with God. In no way did that determine, oh, well, gosh, man, I really wanted to be with John, but that's it. He blew it. He had, that's just not how God operates, okay? Do you think, can you imagine how lost this world would be if we just gave up uh, during moments of faithlessness, during times where you have uh, trouble with your faith, believing again and, and holding on to certain things? Um, remember this, okay, this is, this should never be a foreign concept. You're a lamb, amen, and you're in God's sheep pen. That's awesome, that's incredible. Sheep are always being hunted. They are, in the animal kingdom, prey. They're not predator, okay? It is the responsibility of the shepherd to protect the sheep, amen? So that's where the confidence comes from. But it doesn't come from you just being a sheep. That, if you only look at that aspect, you'll be very nervous. Because <laughs> you're constantly going to be hunted. Uh, but when you come into God's sheep pen, you enter the sanctuary, you recognize who He is, who you are. I'm not saying life gets easier. That's not true. Putting a cross on your back is not, that's not comfy all the time. You know what I'm saying? But what I will say is that even in your doubt, God loves. Even in those times... God still has the same plan for you. His plan didn't change just because you doubted, okay? Just because you had a, a, a tough time. The plan is still available to you. If for all who are far off, for all whom our Lord our God will call. So when you come into Christ, that first week, of course, is going to be feel like a honeymoon. Of course it will. You might even feel that way for a year. I know I did. I was on cloud nine. No one could tell. I mean, I. Man, I, I just lost my mind with celebration. I was I loved it. <laughs> I, mean, I don't look at it with any regret. Um, I made tons of foolish mistakes, but man, I was excited for the Lord. That didn't last forever, okay? 
I, I believe that I have grown to be a much more mature and stable Christian now uh, with lessons that God has given to me. But those lessons, brothers and sisters, they caused me to have doubts. They, I'm telling you, every time you're at a section, a level of faith, I don't know how, whatever you want to look at it, God has already seen the next plateau where he wants to put you. Getting there is a challenge. And then when you do get there, you have a moment like I'm having now. Everything feels fantastic. I had bad news all around me this week. And I'm like, I did have bad news, that's true. But the good news is, Jesus is my king. Jesus is Lord. I'm still following him. I'm still focused on the cross. I'm still heading forward. I'm still moving in the right direction. Uh, he and I are on the same page as far as he is Lord, I am servant. You know, I understand where I am. I understand who he is. And this brings a certain clarity to me, okay? But it doesn't come because I have this super faith. It doesn't become, it, it didn't happen because of my, I don't know, extra faith that was awarded to me. So, no, 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 none of that is true. Um, think about it. If John the Baptist doubted, okay, and we know Thomas, Thomas even has, Poor Thomas Didymus, man, he even has the, uh, the title as, as the doubter, you know. <laughs> and before we make fun of him, just like, you know, Pastor Dale talked about Peter, I want to make fun of him, but he did step out of the boat. That takes a lot of courage. The same thing is true here with Thomas. Did, did any of us, did we go from Jerusalem up to Russia and convert Russia? Are there cathedrals in Russia called St. Your name? No. There are St. Thomas. You're right. He did doubt. But he lived a martyr's life. He, he changed the world in Russia. Okay? He, he did something incredible, something that's just, it, it's faith shattering. It's awe inspiring. And this is the same Thomas that had to be told, put your fingers here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So think about that. Sometimes that's what we want. We want our faith to be sight. You know what I mean? Uh, like, just show me that and I'll do it. Float the Bible down from the sky, let it fall in my path, and then I'll know that's my sign to be a Christian. Guys, Thomas walked with Jesus for three years. You know, he saw incredible things. He saw things that humans don't get to see. Remember, he was on that boat when they came down and said, God, you've got to, we're going to die. You should probably wake up from the nap. He was there that day. He saw God come and said, stop it. He's talking to the wind, to the waves. He said, knock it off. And they did it. Even though he saw that. The women come back, we've seen Jesus. Like, mm, not until I see him. So sometimes you think that's going to change things. It does not. Thomas still doubted. Okay? It was hard. Faith can be a very... Faith goes in opposition to the human condition. Okay? We don't want faith. We want... Tank, give me something. Give me something. That's what, I, I just want to understand this. I just want to understand... Give me. Uh, I'll know that you're God. If, where's my house, man? And sometimes, <laughs> I don't know what you're waiting for. I just know this. The Son of Man had no place to lay his head. But I wonder if he thought he was stricken by God. Or if that's the way we thought about him. Okay? Let that sink in for a little bit. We don't have time to jump into it. But just as I said that, I'm like, oh, that's a lesson right there. So, guys, I want you to understand something here. Uh, I was listening to... Dr. David King's um, lesson, uh, gosh, this was probably three days ago, and uh, it really impacted me. It, re <laughs> it, re it impacted me, but it was one of those ways that's not great at first because it's very unsettling. Because I think to myself, boy, Alex, you should probably know a lot of this stuff. Uh, this, this probably shouldn't be so eye-popping. Uh, but the Word of God is living and active. And although I have read every single passage that man went over, I had not thought about it in the, the corporate life. He's, he's a kingdom preacher. He, everything he seems to do is not about the individual, but about the person, the, the group, the, all of us together becoming one body, one person, one entity. And I had not really thought about the scripture. I had not really saw it in this direct light. I've always seen it. You know, I've seen shades of this. But this was really, really impacting for me. 
And so one of the things he was talking about is the host, the Holy Spirit. And he defined host. And so I got my lexicon out, my Greek and, and Hebrew one, and I, I was just looking in the Greek, and I was looking for, and I was looking for the, uh, the, these different um, ideas, promises from God. And what I ran over, well, let me just read this. This is in John chapter 10, verses uh, 25 through 30. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. So when he says no one can snatch them out of the Father's hand, he's also saying no one can snatch them out of my hand, because the Father and I are one. Hopefully that makes sense. But one thing I looked up, because I got this from Dr. King, or uh, I think he's, I don't know if he's, I have no idea. I think that's what uh, Pastor Briggs, I've heard him call him that before. So uh, this brother, David King, he talked about the host, and he explained, like, look, the host takes control. It's not the other way around, and it was a brilliant, beautiful example. But I looked up this, as I was going through this passage, the, the word that caught my attention was seal. And I've always, you know, I always think about this. Uh, I knew, you know, the Holy Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. That's one definition. There's all these. But here it says the seal. And I, I looked up the seal, and the seal was, in this time, the way it was used properly is, especially in this context, was the king's seal. So if he was sending a note, a letter, something, um, rite of passage, because sometimes you would give even an enemy, hey, you can pass through our lands. Here's the seal. This the seal, and once the king put his signet on it, once the king sealed it, it had all the authority of the king, right? And so this meant, hey, don't go against this because I have the king's blessing. And here we find that this is the same word. I looked it up a couple times because I was so, I was like, this is incredible. But when you get sealed, the father puts his signet on you. He puts his, his image on you. He puts his spirit within you. And he claims you as his own. And I said, I'm going to take my the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to make that, listen to this, verse 28, I give them eternal life, they shall never perish, no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, <clears throat> who has given to me, is greater than all of them, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. So think about that. When you're given this seal, when God seals you with the Holy Spirit, I, I, this just it fascinates me. This uh, this whole idea, it's not that easy. Sometimes we look at our doubts and say, "Oh, I doubt it, and, and I'm not where I I need to be, and therefore it's over. I can never grow again. I can never be where I thought I was going to be. Or I can now I'm too involved in this, and I got too many things on my plate here." But you have the king's seal on you. You are there is something inside of you that is guaranteed. Good service. You know, there's guarantee there. There's, there's something about what God does to his children that sets them apart from the world. And it's not that they become super Christians. Amen? They will grow and they will become, oh man, they're going to take on traits like love. They're going to understand compassion. They're going to have the fruits of the Spirit around them. They will receive the approval of men because they serve God. I believe this to be true. However, it won't be because they find perfection before, because all of a sudden you get baptized, you confess Jesus as Lord, and now you're living a perfect life? No, man. John the Baptist doubted. Thomas Didymus doubted. Some doubted at the day before they saw Jesus ascend into the sky and an angel come back and say, hey, guys, why are you still here? This same Jesus whom you've seen lead is going to come back to you in the same way. I bet the doubts were over at that point. But at the same time, God makes, Jesus makes an incredible point. You believe because you've seen, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Brothers and sisters, that's called faith. So if you've doubted and you've gone backwards, don't lose hope. The battle's not over. Let, 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 me, let me read this. I've, this is one of my favorite passages. Let me read this to give you a small bit of context. Here this is in 2 Timothy Chapter 2, starting in verse 8, it says, Remember, Jesus Christ raised from the dead, 
descended from David, this is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. That's when you got things on straight. That's when you got things on right. When you can look at your situation being in jail and still be striving for the salvation of others because you know how great it is. That's a level of maturity that all of us should be trying. Oh, that's not reserved for Paul. It's not reserved for Peter. It's not reserved. For, faith is accessible for all of us. We've got to go after it. Okay, we've got to do our part. And amen. But listen to this. This is the part that always has fascinated me. And this is get back to that seal. It sealed you with the Spirit. It says, uh, here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endured uh, with him, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. That one passage, he, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself... I could spend the rest of my life trying to figure this out, trying just distilling it, just breaking it down. That is the, it's so rich. But I want you to think about what's being said here. We don't need to understand everything, but let's take away a nugget here. Let's take away a gold nugget that we can take away from this whole time here. Here's one. Uh, you see these things. If you died with him, you'll live with him. So those that were baptized, don't you know that those of us who were baptized were baptized with his death and we were therefore buried with him and then just as Christ raised to, the, you know, uh, to life, we too may you know, live a new life so the idea here is nothing new right, so if you died with him you live with him, you also see that in the Bible that, hey man, deny yourself, carry your cross carry your cross means to die to yourself okay, how do I know that? Uh, well later on it says the man who gains everything all the, every, whatever he wants in this life, and yet forfeits his soul, that's just not worth it. I'd rather to lose my life so I can save it. Okay? But listen to this. It says, if we endure with him, we'll also reign with him. If we endure with him, that's why perseverance is marked throughout Scripture. Take heart. This world has its troubles, but God has overcome the world. So we don't take heart because God removes our troubles. We take heart because God himself overcame it, and we know if we follow him, we also overcome in his name. But I love this. If we disown him, he will also disown us. I, I love this because this is reality. Okay, um, There is no way around this. Um, it is not easy. To separate yourself from God. I, I'm, I've never been a once saved, always saved kind of a guy because of this passage. I, I know that if you deny him before men, he'll deny you before his angels. And here it says if we disown him, he will also disown us. Okay, so your faith is so important. Now you don't have to be the strongest of Christians at this point. You don't have, you might be in shambles. You might, it, this might be all recovery time for you. Okay. If that's true, listen to what I'm saying. Don't you ever find yourself in this position. Okay? You hold on to your faith. You, hold, you do everything you can to stand. And then when you're done doing that, stand up. Because I'm telling you, you're under attack. And you're away from the shepherd. And you're away from the sheep pen. And sheep are not predators. They are prey. Be careful. Come back to the sanctuary. Find peace there. But listen to this. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. So that same seal of the Holy Spirit, deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. And think about what Jesus said. If, if I give them eternal life, no one's going to come and take that from them. They're not going to take him from my hand. They're certainly not going to take him from my Father's hand. And just so everyone's clear, the Father and I are one. So if Jesus has led you, and if you've confessed Jesus as Lord, and that's your master, that's your king, you believe in the name of God, you believe that he is who he says he is, you want to walk in this life, you're, you want to walk in that light, you want to understand him fully, listen to this, even during your backsliding, your faithless moments, even during your times of doubt, 
God remains faithful because he cannot disown himself. How is that possible? Well, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus gives us a clue in our, our original passage. Say, hey, the Father and I are one. But you know the Father and the Son, you know they're also one with something else. They're one with the Spirit. It's called the Trinity, right? God is the Father and the Son and the Spirit. And we, you, like an egg. You have the, no one ever asks for a, yeah, let me get an egg, but you know what? Take the shell off and let me just get the egg white. Not the, no, 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 you either ask for egg whites or you just ask for an egg. We, the, some things are understood. You know, same thing with, with the Trinity. When you say God and you say son, uh, the Son, Jesus, and you say the Holy Spirit, I know what you're talking about. I know you're talking about the whole, you're talking about God. Okay, just like an egg has a shell, then a yolk, and an egg white. I've never just separated those. It's like, just give me some eggs. Um, and the same thing here is like we know that the Spirit is with the Father and the Son. So if he puts you that in you, he seals you. Not only do you have the king's authority, you have the king's permission to live this life, the king's permission to live the way you live. Now when you're faithless, God still remains faithful because he cannot disown himself because he has placed himself within you. How long does the spirit last? Well, it's an eternal spirit. So when he says it's guaranteeing what's to come, what are you talking about? We're talking about eternity. And if it's the Spirit's guarantee, it's going to be an eternity in heaven. Amen? It's worth it, is what I'm saying. It's worth it to try again. If you're angry at things, get it out. Talk to someone. If you don't have anyone to talk to, man, just rant. I'll listen. I'll listen. Send me more emails. Start shooting them out. Get them out. Get what, do what you have to do to get things out. To get, be honest with yourself. And I think when you're honest with yourself, you can be honest with your Father. And when you're honest with Him, and you humble yourself, you see what it's like once again to be in the Father's pen, to be surrounded by the other sheep, to feel that safety, that, that security, the peace of just knowing that you are protected. You are being taken care of. You are being treasured like a possess just a, 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 a value something that goes beyond anything in fact when you seek the kingdom the bible is very clear if you find that field with that little pearl in there the kingdom it's so val sell everything do whatever you have got to do sell everything go buy that field and take that little pearl that's that was the truth i don't care about the field this is it this is what i was looking for so Think about this in the mornings when you're about to have a quiet time and you're about to say, hey, i got to try, i got to do something. I'm going to read a devotional book. I'm going to get into the Bible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray a little prayer. I'm going to do something. Know this. You're walking in the footsteps of faithful Christians everywhere. That's how these men ended up getting their faith back. You know, back then there, was the, there wasn't a written New Testament, but they brought word back from Jesus Okay? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. So when John heard this report, he directly heard it from the word of Christ, and his faith was encouraged. He could even face death with confidence. Now, I don't want anyone to face death with any kind of, you know, with anything. I don't, you know, I don't want anyone to die. My point here is that death had lost its sting because of the eternal name of Jesus. Death had lost its sting because the Messiah was in the world and John put his faith in. That was his secret weapon. Brothers and sisters, I hope you'll take time to get that secret weapon back. I hope you'll take time to cherish it, polish it, uh, just do whatever it takes to mature it, um, whatever that might mean. Listening to a message, well, I, whatever that might mean. I'm talking about getting into the Word again. The simple things, nothing ever changes, guys. Always think it's, oh, i got to do this. And I, no, 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 no. Get back in there. It's like, you know, you, you're out of shape. Get in the gym. Do something about it. I can't do it for you, but do something about it. Do, you know, I, if it's walking, it's walking. If it's uh, some people like video, P90X, whatever, I don't care. Just do something. Go on a walk. Enjoy this. Look outside. It's gorgeous today. I don't know about your part of the world, but it is beautiful again out here. When you are faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot disown himself. You have the hope of glory within you.
That's the great mystery. Christ inside you, the hope of glory. And that hope is secure. It's not so easily taken just because you had doubts, just because you don't feel like a, a super Christian. Amen? I hope that makes sense to you. We're going to continue. I'll, I'll, I'll start something again tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit more about how God comforts us in our times of weakness because in our weakness, we can find strength, unshakable strength. And it comes in the weirdest, most opposite, most paradoxical form you can imagine. And that's the way God works. Die so that you can live. Give up everything so that you can gain everything. These are opposite things. They don't make any sense, but they make perfect sense if you're following Christ. Because he is going to walk in opposition to the world. Not in its politics, not in its governments, not in it. You know, we see those, God didn't come to be king for, you know, the that kind of an earthly king. We see those things. We can't put, we can't make the same mistakes over and over again and expect Jesus to be someone different than he really is. He is the Savior of souls. He is God's Son. And he loves you. To the point where not only could John face death with confidence, Jesus faced that death with confidence. After what? After that time in Gethsemane. The Bible calls it prayer. <laughs> okay? So guys, amen. To God be the glory. I hope that helps. And I hope that you know anyone that's in that position can find strength once again. Alright guys, have a great day.